those problems. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's a good move. Is everybody ready? Yep. We're going to start. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so we have a uh, couple of public hearings, actually three public hearings on the agenda tonight. But the first item on the agenda is a discussion right Box Mill Road. And I'll turn it over to the Vice Chair, Mr. DeYoung, to continue since he had, had started the uh, yes. process. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so this kind of came to our attention a couple weeks ago, a couple meetings ago, where <coughs> the, uh, one of the, uh, I was called them a butter, so I think it was an a butter, um, brought up a concern with um, Mr. Barbieri about the, uh, some agreement um, that was reached prior to Mr. Barbieri coming in front of this body um, uh, in his proposal. Now, I understand and I know that our jurisdiction here is fairly limited, but I would be interested in understanding from Mr. Barbieri his point of view and is there any ability here to, for both parties to reach some degree of consensus? There is. I'm, I'm willing to turn that shed, garage, block building, whatever you want to call it, over to them, but they have to fix it up. They have to fix it up quickly. If, if anyone's been up there and seen it, I mean, it's got like six windows that are all broken, the doors were never put on, there's no garage door, everything is deteriorated. <laughs> You know, I'm going to be selling some houses up there. It's and when you say quickly, I mean, I, I, again, this is a little bit outside. Days, something like that. I, I asked them to escrow some money. They'd come to terms and they wouldn't meet with me. Uh, the original and Alex, I asked to meet with the buyers, with the building department, because they got the building department involved. Yeah. And he said he was too busy. I thought everything went away. Then I got contacted. The new people wanted to see me about it. Yeah, I mean, my position, I'm open to other comments or members of the board's thought as well, but, uh, you know, this is something that was entered, to, entered into in good faith, I think, by both parties. Right. Uh, if, if you look at the, he sent you people a letter with a copy of what he believed the deal was. Yeah. And on that, it says he's supposed to fix it up. He's moved now. He has no intention of fixing it up. And when they came with the potential buyers, when they were putting it on the market, I said, if you're going to transfer this to the next people, you're going to have to escrow about $30,000 to make sure they can fix it up. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, I don't think it'll cost that much. I mean, they were well aware of everything that was going on. They waited until the day before they closed, wanted me to sign the, the deed, or they claimed that the building department and you people were going to stop me from building. Uh, I said, I don't believe that's true. I says, but, well, you know, let's grab something out. But he, his wife specifically told me the people that bought their house that are there now do not have the money to fix that building up. And if anybody's seen the building. So he's gone. He's we're, gone. We're, we're right here if you have some questions for us. We oh, the yeah. This is my wife. Yeah, good. Oh. I'm waving at you from the So side. I didn't even notice you guys were here. Yeah. Um, you know, I, this is not a, a court of public opinion, so I don't want to get into a. a, a no, like I said, I'm willing to transfer that property so long as it's my yes bill, and I'm sure it will be fixed up, which was the original proposal. Yeah. Uh, do you, so, so just from my perspective, we... we so you, 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 nobody can hear you yeah, at Yeah, you got to come up to the microphone and yeah. just identify yourself. Just street address. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm Alex Papanikos. I'm the prior owner of 5 Leonard Street. So the, the issue I have is that we never had a time constraint on when we were going to fix up the garage when we had our initial agreement years ago. We always agreed to fix it up, but there was never a time constraint on when we had to do that by. It was actually the opposite of what he's asking for now. He said he wanted to use the garage while construction was in progress to hold his construction tools, which we agreed to. And then after he was done with construction, he'd give it to us so we could fix it up. Now he wants the garage fixed up before he sells his houses, which is the opposite of what our initial agreement was. So that's, that's the issue. And the new owners do want to fix it up. I just don't think it's fair for them to have a time constraint and have to escrow $30,000 or whatever because him and I never had an agreement that I needed to escrow any money uh, when we had our initial agreement years ago. We never really had an agreement. All we had was proposals. We never signed anything. We never came no, and that, and, that, and, that's, and that's but fair. But I'm willing to honor that. And, and, and that's fair. And I've talked to the new owners. They're discussing with their lawyers what they want to do. Um, but again, we didn't think it was fair to just all of a sudden throw on them that he needed to escrow $30,000 and fix up the garage within 90 days, which we had never had an agreement on. So, but your agreement was to fix it up, right? It was to fix it up, yeah, but now we never had a time you, constraint. Now you've moved and you have no plans to fix it up, right? True, but the new owners okay. wanted I, to I acquire just to get that out there. it. We only gave it to the new owners 
because they wanted to fix it up. I told you that if and the and new I owners weren't going to fix it you up. You said you were selling your property. <laughs> let's do something together. Let's meet with the, the new buyers and everything. You would have none of it. That was the day before so, we closed. Okay. So okay. can I just recommend so, that we it, control it, this yeah, conversation? Yeah, yeah, okay. So this yeah. is probably a little bit deeper than I wanted to get yep. into on this. So I, I appreciate, Alex, your position. Yep. Mr. Barbieri, I appreciate your position. I'm not, we're not here to adjudicate yep. it, right? I'm not Judge Judy. I thought, you know, if there was a way to work it out, and I'm sounding like this is going to be a very difficult thing if lawyers yep. are going to get involved, I think we're going to have to probably leave it at that yep. and My say. My last correspondence with him was, could we all meet? He said he didn't have time. Okay. I, I just want to add last comment. one last more comment. thing. So the reason why this is an issue is that what we spoke to the building department about this before we listed our house for sale and said, we're concerned about this being an issue. If there is an issue, what can you do to help us? And they told us twice that before he would get his building permits, he would have to deed us the property. So that's why we sort of went down this path. Otherwise, we never would have given this property to the new buyers. But the, the building department said on separate occasions to us that they would support us before he got his building apartment, building permits for the new development, that he would need to deed us the property, and that never happened. So that's why this more, this is more of an issue because we never would have gave it to them in the first place if we knew the town okay. wasn't going to support us. I'm sorry. Please. Yep. Um, how can you give something to somebody that you don't? Yeah, I mean, how how was this transfer affected that you were able to give them? I, this piece of property that you do not have control of right I now. made an agreement with the new buyers that if I do obtain the property, I will give it to them. But it, it was initially always, we had all this documented, and so some of the other neighbors who had their houses for sale had similar agreements with him that, that they decided not to pursue. But um, several of the neighbors were, were given land in exchange for our support of his development when he went to the planning board years ago as part of all the planning board meetings and on all of the plans it says that he's supposed to deed me that parcel so that's what we went to the the new buyers with and we proved to them that hey he's supposed to deed us the parcel per all of the plans for the new development and we said that once we get that we will give that to you and we just never got it i just so. have one piece of feedback I, we don't have any jurisdi yeah, right. jurisdiction Understood. Here. Understood. um but i do know that the people who live there currently and the people who are going to want to buy those houses are going to be interested in that property being um, fixed up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first step is to meet together and come to terms and to have a timeline to fix it up for sure. Yeah, right. I have a comment and a question. Okay. Uh, we were on a sidewalk, we talked about this at the time. Um, your baby was an infant? At the time, I did. Yep. And uh, my dog was a puppy at the time. Yeah. And um, I just find it troublesome that both people in that corner have had trouble with the agreements with you. With both people. Both people on both sides of that absolutely corner. Absolutely not true. Both sides. It is true. It's absolutely not true. And you have to. I have to think sometimes. Is it you or them? It, I don't know. First off, the, the person on the other corner agreed to everything in the last minute, asked for $25,000. That's why we didn't do that spot. She came before the so it's, it's, yeah. that's not you, you, My point yeah. is, Frank, my I, question is. Final is, point. I'm going to wrap it up. Are the new buyers interested in keeping the garage? A. And if they're not, uh, what are. Would you be interested in keeping the garage? I don't want the garage. It, it's it's nice. It's in tough shape. It, it needs everything. And so for okay, is that is that question answerable tonight? So the our impression from the buyers was that they wanted that property to fix up their garage and we sold it to them. So I, I reached out okay. to them a couple weeks ago again and asked them what they wanted to do and inform them of the situation and they said that they were going to discuss it with their lawyers and figure out what they want to do i haven't heard from them since okay. um, i offered to set up a meeting with with them with the new buyers yeah. um, but i haven't heard from them to be honest but. so without that information maybe we're a little short side not inviting them as well um, i wasn't aware of some of this stuff that transpired right 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 right, right. Um, I, I, I guess we would need more information and they would need to uh, yeah. state what they like and I, again at this point i think it's it's beyond our scope i think it's between the applicant mr barbieri the potential new owner's lawyers sure. to have the situation worked out there's nothing else that this board but as a board do. though uh, and as a town um i could ask a question of our main chair uh would open space be interested in 
anything to do with this type of uh, situation. If if there's no one who wants to own the property, it might make a nice little park. Nah, <laughs> from an open space, and I also chair open space, uh, isolated pieces of property are not something that's of interest to the uh, open open space committee, <coughs> unless there's some other reason for it, historic, protecting water supply, uh, et, et cetera. Because that is close to the football field, close to the school, yeah. might make a nice memorial park, or? Yeah, I don't. Know, sitting place, let people walk to school. It's kind of tiny, though. Mm -hmm. One down. of the. There's, there's probably going to be some property deeded to the town at the back of this property, behind the retention area. Right, right. Yeah, they put the uh, cross country in. I don't want to commit to it, but that's probably going to go to people. Okay. Um, so, yes. Your name, just if you want to say something, just for the for the record. Um, this is Carrie Papanicholas, former owner of Five Leonard Street. Where do you folks live now? We're in Rainham now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not in Hockey. We just okay. we moved to okay. Ago. No, that's fine. I, you, we usually get your current address oh, if you're in town. That's all. Street. Um, my only question is, would you guys be able to not issue any de demolition permits because we are planning on following up in court? Um, we're gonna we're gonna bring a lawsuit. So. This board does not issue demolition uh -huh. permits. Now that would be through which group? It's not does us. It? The building, building department. Yes. Building Any building permits. They would be through the building permit. It's the building. not. It's right. not. Yeah. It's right. not us that does it. So okay. we don't have any jurisdiction. So we should just contact them. <laughs> yeah, I would say just the, the building permit department. Yeah. So honestly, I believe a demo permit permit has already been issued. Your your best your your own your best option is to speak to an attorney and find out the process. That's we, yeah, we have. Um, they told that's us that's option would be to do something together. Really, you know, uh, no, uh, yes, but we can't. Can. The our lawyer had recommended sending the certified letters to the boards, which is why you guys got our letter, and he okay. also okay. recommended talking to you guys first. Um, so we're going to follow up. Point of clarification: cool. between I, I, open question, I guess, but. Uh, if there's already been a uh, demolition permit, I've been told it hasn't been fully issued yet. But who who applied for it? The current owner of the property. Current owner. <laughs> I met with the building commissioner and the building inspector. They thought it would be easier to just demo it. I applied for the permit <laughs> just to have the permit. I don't want to demo it. I would love to see the people take it and fix it up. That's the primary. Right, that's which I think we can all agree on. From the sidewalk on to, to today. Again, ideally, I think just yeah. all the parties sure, can be together. Just right. a real quick note, my sure. own sure. notification. So, who would, if, if they did give a certain amount and it was held, who would decide, how would that be decided whether it's going to give them back that money? Is it 30,000? Mean, so, 30,000 escrow. Right. So, we're yeah. asking for. so well, when I, would they I, get I, that? I'm trying to write polls. That they come up with the amount that they think they can reasonably fi finish that property. That it means everything new. Siding, the roof, there's no doors, garage, everything, door, windows, everything's gone. Great, right. eh? Uh, a reasonable amount that they would escrow, and they would fix it up themselves within a reasonable amount of time. And if it isn't fixed up by then, it gets down. But who would make the decision as far as when they get their money back? To yeah. It's well, it's it's, it's them, Dave. Yeah. This is not. This no, is I was not just saying. Fast. I was just yeah. trying to help them out. That you know what? To work with, They've got probably yeah. a high price tail. Can, can, can I just say one thing as a resident? I, I would say if the planning board approves decisions where all of this stuff was out in the open when the development was getting approved in the beginning, and we had no idea that this would be a problem for us and the other neighbors, like like we we supported his development, hoping that feeling that the town would support us because all of the, all these agreements were in all the town documents, they were on all the town planning board agendas, they were in all the meeting minutes, and now we're having this argument in front of you, and I, I know it makes us look silly, um, but I just ask that the planning board considers these things going forward, that when a developer approaches with agreements from you know potential neighbors to get his development approved, that you find a way to either support neighbors or make sure that there's some legality behind it to help support us so we don't end up in this situation again. Because, again, all this was out in the open when we provided support for his development, and now here we are looking no. stupid. So. No, no, not, not at all. Yeah. You know, uh, point well noted, yeah. right? And I think, you know, in the future, that's something when it's an agreement between the different parties yeah. that they have counsel and the agreement yeah. is something in writing, all the different components. Because yeah. that's not something for this board to right. adjudicate. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody, thank you. The Anything else? Part, I asked you to talk to them about Stonewall. Um, 
But you were going to send me something that you never sent me. Excuse me? Weren't you going to send me something? No, I just, the last time I said I asked him, the old stone wall that was kind of not there, I asked him to move it back onto the property. Since then, I took that old stone wall home. I got most of the grass, it looks pretty good. I like to wave the stone wall, that's possible. Wait, but I thought I asked you to put that in writing. No, I didn't. I thought I wanted to. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I think, think so something, if I can say that that's something I have to get on the agenda and right. we can't. We'll do that. Yeah, the public hasn't yeah. been noticed, no. that's yeah. all. Thank you for coming, by the way. Thank you, Mr. Barry. <coughs> all right, Mr. Chairman, okay. I, I cede uh, Thank control you. back to you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is public hearing, Whisper Ridge Open Space Landscape Preservation Development and flexible community development special permits. A mouthful. Um, and Mr. Durso is our project liaison on this, so I will turn it over to, uh, to him. Thank you. Are you all in possession of our outline for this discussion? And we need to open. Uh, yes. I'll move to open the public, public hearing. hearing. Some second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Um, motion passes. Uh, according to the outline, which is already one that they put out and described in our minutes and our package, uh, we'll first hear from Principal Planner Jennifer Burke on overview of the site and the project. Um. <coughs> yeah. So I always think they. Um, so this site is um, an existing um, private way, Whisper Way is an existing private way that the applicant is proposing to um, enhance and extend to create a subdivision for 22 lots um, for single family homes with some protected open space. Um, the the original approval was a quote unquote family subdivision, um, and this they're looking to make that a bigger project now at this point. Um, they've uh, proposed they should have a conventional plan with a loop road with two connections to Wood Street um, that shows a yield plan of 22 lots, um, and then the open space concept plan also shows 22 lots with. A cul-de-sac, um, however, the length of the cul-de-sac is about uh, 2,700 feet in length. Um, um, Beta has reviewed the plan um, and has provided comments in the memo, which Phil uh, is here tonight and can speak to that. Thank you. Um, that's what I have to Very well summarized. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, just a quick question. Mr. Mm -hmm. How many acres are we talking about here? Just under 40. 40 acres, yeah. thank you. Uh, for those of you at home or in the audience who don't know, uh, Phil Paradise, Paradis uh, represents uh, the town as a private uh, engineer, and uh, he's uh, looked at the initial submission and uh, some of the conservation review work that was done in 2003, and uh, has some specific uh, feedback, if you would, Phil. Yeah. You're item number two? Or no. My, no, you're out of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, out of order. <laughs> Project introduction and the features of the site by the applicant That's and landscape architect. Frank. Oh, okay. no, okay. so. He's leaving the room. <laughs> so I'm Elizabeth Mainini from Gary Aaron Hellman, uh, representative for Ron Nation. Um, there's a, a bunch of us here, Ron with his sons, Chris and Craig. Uh, Dan McIntyre, who's uh, one of the landowners. Uh, Larry Green from Waterman Design, the landscape architect. Uh, Mark Cablat um, is the opponent's attorney. And we also have Dan Wells from Goddard Consulting. And I actually forgot uh, George Mehove, also from uh, Gary Aaron Hellman. Um, you want me to just go over? like a quick overview yes please <laughs> so uh, our home audience will have a camera view of our rear map so if you stand to one side or the other you can, you can uh, give a pointer or your, your hand you can 
so it's a, uh, like I said, it's approximately a 40 acre site uh, off of Wood Street and it's in between Interstate 495 on this side and this is the existing um, gravel road of Whisper Way. Um, we're looking to... Uh, I'm sorry, just for our home audience, uh, the south is, uh, the, is the north side of that and the north is the south side of that. So yes. it's looking from the south side of Wood Street down. Correct. It's upside down, basically. Yes. Uh, so uh, Mr. Nation is looking to uh, develop the site that is outlined in the red. Um, these two existing homes off of Whisper Way are not included in the subdivision, um, nor is this small property out here. Uh, ideally, we would like to uh, do a open space plan, um, but as part of the permitting process, we have to first look at it as a conventional subdivision. Um, through the conventional subdivision layout and all of the calculations required by the subdivision, uh, the zoning regulations, uh, we come out to proposing 22 lots, uh, single family lots. I'm not sure how much other detail you want me to get into prior to that. Generally okay. Um. I mean, I can certainly, there's a lot more I can go From into. this high view of the project, uh, there, there's just one entrance on Wood Street. So, that's, so to get it, yeah, we can do two entrances. Uh, we're currently proposing one in the open space plan, um, but as I get into the further detail, uh, we have other options that we're proposing for a second entrance or exit out of the entrance. Just for clarification, I'm sorry. Um, it's on the open space plan, you have an other proposed ideas for other entrances? Okay. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Oh, there's, there's been some feedback, but we'll, we'll get to that after Jennifer for details. So the only other comments I would have at this time is that the um, proposed um, length of the cul-de-sac is longer than <coughs> is allowed in our bylaw. Um, so if we're going to continue on with this plan, they need a variance in the Board of Appeals. To do that, um, you have some information from the Board of Health um, in your memo. Um, that's the only uh, comment from any other town departments. Um, I do know that they did meet with the fire chief who was unavailable for this meeting as he's away, um, but they could probably address whatever comments that he had as well. Um, they have applied for the Flexible Community Development Special Permit, which um, under our bylaw requires one affordable unit for every 10. So they would need two affordable units. They've asked for a payment in lieu of, which is at the board's discretion. Um, if you need more information on that, I'd be happy to provide it. Um, and they will also at some point need an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. Um, Frank, if I could ask, that is a question I came with tonight, sort of separate from this application. But is there ever, uh, you know, what are the implications of, you know, payment in lieu of versus insisting on uh, affordable units? What is the, it's the board's discretion? We um, I think before you were on the board, we, um, which I can provide the board, we have a um, sort of a like a spreadsheet that counts out over the next, um, thank you, Amy, <laughs> the next, um, <laughs> till 2020, um, to the next census, what our affordable housing counts would be. So um, that would tell you, you know, without <coughs> this project, that's where we would be at. Mm -hmm. So we'd probably be fine with a payment in lieu of, um, if, but if the board wanted to require the construction of units to make sure, that would be up to the board. So um, so really the bottom line decision is where we are on that 10% over under? That's, that's probably where I would gauge okay. it if I were a board member, but that's okay. solely your discretion. In, that was in, totally so my question. In general, our former chair would, um, once we got to the limit, uh, not limit, the good level of affordable housing, <coughs> would generally suggest uh, the, the payment in lieu of taxes, uh, but each situation is different and... Um, I just really wanted to know if there's a philosophical 
I mean, a lot of it has to do with how close we are to that 10% yes. okay. since we're well over at this point. Uh, the other issue has been uh, looking at where the development is located mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with the idea that a lot of the affordable housing are seniors. Uh, if it's farther away from downtown, might want to consider mm -hmm. looking at the payment in lieu of mm -hmm. where therefore we might be able to build something later on rather than isolating, right. you know, somebody three miles from right. Shantan. Yeah. Okay. Amy? Can I just add for people at home, it, it, according to the chart from March, we would be at about 11% affordable housing through 2020. That's where Correct. we are now. And our goal is 10%. The goal is 10, yeah. at least 10, yeah. Thank you. Mr. Chair, just have a question about different. Sure. Um, I'm a little unclear about the cul-de-sac. So this is the conventional plan. There's no cul-de-sac, right? Correct. Correct. And so, so where's the cul-de-sac in the, in the open, open space plan? Yeah, if you wanted to go through, I just didn't know if you wanted me to do an introductory overview or if you wanted me to go through a full presentation of the project. Well, I, I think some of us are familiar with the, with the location. Uh, if we do a site walk, um, I'm a bit more familiar with it. But I, I think it's a very valid question because I think to fully answer it though, on the on the open space plan, the cul de sac is almost near where this circle is anyways. Wow, it's uh, actually can we just pop it up so we can see it? Right. On the back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, a little bit further. Okay. So yeah, yeah. so the, this yeah, we're not going the open space plan doesn't show us going but it, is that a road connecting yep. across there or yes. no? okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is, I, I, I feel like I should just kind of go through yes, maybe yeah. a quick, <laughs> yeah, a quick but full explanation. All right, so this is the uh, conventional subdivision plan, which is required as part of what we do to uh, to determine the number of lots that we can um, do in a, a, a open space development. Um, the 40 acres it includes several, uh, wet, one very large wetland and several smaller wetlands. The conventional plan uh, includes three crossings, I think. Um, and can you point those out? Four. I'm sorry. This one. Two, and three. both sides here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so this transects and we're going to pass it. Okay. Um, Uh, one of Vita's comments was regarding the, the uh, existing parking. There's an existing parking area uh, for the town, but this cul-de-sac, even though it's really what the right-of-way cul-de-sac is up here, the actual cul-de-sac is further down, uh, and there's parking that uh, residents <coughs> use now to access uh, walking paths into the open space. So as you can see with this plan, we're, um, the, in order to fit all of the lots, we're getting everything out to basically the edges um, in order to create enough space to get the lots large enough to meet the agricultural zoning. Um, that's another little, this, this is actually the agricultural zoning is in front of this, in between Wood Street and this line. And then it goes to our view. For, for a home audience, uh, it's pretty steep there where that where that line is. But can you explain uh, perhaps a little bit more where that the rectangle surrounded in red up up? No, no, yes, that's one. But that's a that's a that's a current lot that's not. This is a owned. current lot. Yep. That the the one on Wood Street is not owned by this property. This one is not owned. And the house that's uh, on next to 495 is, is owned by. Correct. It is included as part yep. of the parcel. The rectangle higher up that you're just, yes, that is not included as part of the parcel because it's currently open space. Uh, it's no, there's two current, there's homes. So, uh, Whisper Way currently serves three homes these two and this one up here. And as part of the purchase of the land, uh, Ron would be purchasing this parcel with all of this <laughs> plus this house down on one street. But, but the, the parking for the trails is town property. It, correct. It is on this side of the property line. Okay. Thank you. So that's what, and the existing cul-de-sac is actually down here someplace. I'm looking at the monitor behind you. And you're doing a really good job of pointing that out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So one of the other features, uh, so this will be serviced by town water, uh, and we are proposing a shared septic system. Uh, so everything would be collected and then pumped up to uh, the system in this area. Uh, the Board of Health has reviewed that, and uh, it's, a, it's something that they will, we will need to provide further information for them, but um, it is an acceptable way for us to handle the, the septic, uh, as opposed to having them throughout the subdivision. Uh, I don't think I have anything else on And for the home audience, um, the reason that you're showing this plan is to prove that without any special permission from us, you could build I, right. it's, it's viable lots uh, from, from, from this plan. Yep, and so uh, even the, the three wetland crossings is under 5,000 square feet, which is a, a threshold that um, isn't impossible to overcome, but it's just a lot more uh, comprehensive permitting, especially with the um, Army Corps and uh, from an environmental standpoint more so than. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair, just a quick question. So for the open space plan, would you also be doing the, sewer, the centralized sewer? So can you just explain why you would, if you're gonna put the infrastructure in to pump it through it, why you wouldn't connect to the town sewer? Uh, uh, which yeah. street is that? No. Okay. That would explain it. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Pratchett, question yes, for me. Uh, with both the conventional and the open space plan, the area, the parking area for uh, right there, how many cars are allotted? Or is it big six. enough to hold? Six. About six. And that, would that be maintained with both projects? Yes, in both projects. Okay. So in the in the open space, um, we actually are proposing an additional parking area for access to more trails. So this was our initial uh, run. This is what we um, submitted as far as the open space plan, open, open space and landscape preservation plan. Uh, it includes, so the open space plan included almost a mile of roadway. This is 32 hundred square feet, 3,400 square feet, linear feet, sorry. Uh, and that includes Whisper Way and this uh, crossing Bear Path. Uh, the reason that we included Bear Path to begin with was to just try to uh, increase access to the subdivision. Um, obviously it's a lot longer if you have to come all the way around, so we were, that was our intent. Um, we're open to eliminating that, and I'll go through that a little bit later. To the chair. Um, Amy? Oh, I just wanted to clarify. So even with Bear Path, you still exceed the 1,000 feet um, it's cul-de-sac rule? So uh, there's sort of a little discrepancy between the regulations for the zoning and for the subdivision rules and regulations. The way the subdivision rules and regulations read, the um, dead end length would be considered from Wood Street, mm -hmm. in which case coming up, going down Bear Path and down Whisper is still yes over, okay. uh, it's 15, a little over 1,500 square feet, linear feet, I keep saying that. Mm -hmm. So it still does, even with that, um, exceed the 1,000. Okay. Uh, <coughs> to, well, to you, Mr. Chair, while we're sure. discussing this, maybe it's for the principal planner. What, how do they make that decision whether it's Wood Street or is it because that road's private going up? Uh, the definition of our of dead end streets in our subdivision regulations says it starts at the nearest through street, which would be Wood Street. Oh, the nearest through street. Okay, thank you. So, and that's where, uh, again, it's a sort of a little bit of a clarification thing. And to the subdivision rules and regulations, when you go into the open space, don't really apply. And there's no definition for them in for a dead end street in the open space regulations. So I'm not, it's something that would be up to you, up to you to make the decision whether or not you wanted to stay consistent with the subdivision rules and regulations or uh, interpret it a different way. I, I would just put this out there right now. We're not at any stage to even really discuss that yet, but Mr. Nation has a pretty good history of 
making things fit and in a responsible manner. So uh, I think that we have a good history of working together in, in various boards, and uh, you know that you know, that can be looked at as we have we have lots of feedback that will affect uh, what we're seeing right now. So this is just the first go at it. So yeah. I so if I could, sorry. go ahead. Sorry to be the devil's advocate, but <laughs> the whole reason of the cul-de-sac is to have a second entrance into, say, a, a tree falls across that main entrance. How would, how would emergency equipment be able to get in there? So I, I have a concern with that. Oh, yeah. There's there's concerns that have been pointed out, and yeah. it's a very steep situation right now. It's not really a paved road, and they have plans to pave it, but uh, there's some topography issues that uh, we'll get to. Yes. Uh, I was just going to say, I think in our packet, but also in previous hearings, we have come to understand that the pathway to overcoming that is a waiver with the Board of Appeals um, within the open space. Okay. So. Uh, Sorry, so, I didn't follow that. So, so the, override. It, the Board of Appeals has jurisdiction. If I'm if I'm saying it right, well, Jennifer, jurisdiction in, within, the, about, within the open space planning to extend uh, uh, cul-de-sac more than a thousand feet that isn't something that we can weigh that is something that has to okay. be we have regulations against that so we we <coughs> could but we really no, no. no. we had an opinion it's a zoning council. bylaw so irrelevant. We, that we can't irrelevant because we haven't we haven't yet We've uh, and um if, so we'd have if they were asking we'd have to say no and then they'd have to go to the right. board of appeals uh, but hopefully that they'll we'll get to something that does fit regulations. Totally, right. Right. totally. That's what, I'm just saying up front. That's our understanding. That's what we have heard Understood. and we know. So uh, back to the utilities again. We would still be uh, town water, and and we're still showing the same shared system again. Board of Health has looked at it, and, and this is a viable option. Uh, this. Proposal only includes one crossing, which is for the bear path, which again we're absolutely open to and uh, open to eliminating that if that's, if that's the uh, what the board thinks is the best course of action. We still have 22 lots, uh, and and this is including the existing house two back here. Uh, and then along the road. If we eliminated Fair Path, we would need to relocate. This one actually could front on that already, but we'd have to relocate these two. So again, this is you know somewhat preliminary. It's a very preliminary plan. I uh, just wanted to get your ideas uh, on if we were moving in the right direction or not. The second uh, <coughs> parking area that I referenced is over here on the, cul the post cul-de-sac of Whisper Way. Uh, and it would allow access to, I don't know how well you can see the, the orange color, but we're proposing a great deal of walking paths throughout, uh, throughout the open space, which is along the border buffer as required, and also um, into the open space over here. This open space abuts the town-owned uh, open space, so I think that that speaks to you know how well this property falls into um, this kind of development for the open space and the landscapes. You know, it's always in most cases towns are looking to uh, abut as much of new open space against existing open space and just create a greater area. Mr. Chair. So, can I ask you a question? So, I'm thinking, in my own personal opinion, that a combination of the two would work best. But can I ask you why you don't continue the road around and down with the open space plan? What's the difficulty with the second outlet? So, there's a couple of difficulties. One is the uh, elevation difference. There's, uh, there's quite a, I don't, I don't know how well you can see the um, topo here. That there's a pretty good cut or in the to get from the roadway up to the existing um, area and also we're trying to minimize the <coughs> conservation impact by uh, minimizing what we were having to do as far as crossing the wetlands here um, 
So that would be a second crossing? This would, yeah. Exactly. But there's a house right there right now, and it's... The driveway slants up, right? Yeah. The driveway actually comes all the way over here. Uh -huh. um, and then there's... And then you get into separation it issues. It wouldn't make a bad road there. Yeah, that's what I would take them to. That driveway wouldn't make a bad road, right? So, what... Again, after looking at Beta's letter and, and seeing that the dead end link was a significant problem for the, for the board, um, one of, and talking to the fire chief, we uh, were currently showing, a, or this is the direction I think we were thinking to go in, um, is as a uh, balance between the environmental standpoint and creating that second access uh, this would be a 16 it starts off at 16 along the existing driveway and then goes to 12 feet wide which is um, the fire chief said he was he that was acceptable for our, uh, access for his fire trucks um, but access following this existing drive and then there's an existing cart path that goes almost all the way up to uh, where whisper way is here um, Sir, I'm not clear about the, the width you're just talking about in the fire department. The width of the, so it's a, the, the typical roadways are 20 feet wide. Right. This would, we're proposing it at 16 to 12 feet wide. Okay. Uh, as a one way road only. And it would be one way into the project. Um, that way they would have safe access should a tree fall down across. Okay. Um, just my own personal opinion was I'd like to see the standard road all the way through and not try to compromise and a smaller road between. We've had some issues I, with I that agree. with other developments. So just my own personal feedback. Okay. I understand. I appreciate the concern for the conservation, but mm -hmm. in my opinion, the two access to the development is important. You know how the rest of the board feels. I mean, I'm just, I'm still gathering information, yeah. I think, yeah, at this point, from myself. Okay, so she's looking for some input as well, so yeah, I'm just no, trying to supply it. In, in general, we, we like new streets to be at least 20 feet wide. And, um, so it's, we don't want another driveway, we want another street. Um, things can, you know, this is still preliminary. Yep. Beyond what you're doing right now, so we'll get there. That was great, thank you for sharing it. I guess the only other um, major points I wanted to make was uh, it's we're providing 60%, almost 60% open space, uh, which is a pretty significant amount, uh, 24, almost 24 acres. Uh, as I said, we were going to have the uh, paths, additional parking to access the paths. Um, is uh, about four of those are wet? Is that right? Wetlands? Correct. Okay. Yeah, 3.6. Okay, three and a half, yeah. So it's a, still a fairly small percentage. Yep. Um, I guess that's all I have, I think, for right now. Um, <coughs> we certainly have plenty of people here to answer questions with regard to the septic <coughs> system, landscaping, anything else that. Looking at for that later in the, in the outline. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one thing I should probably ask uh, the board is: Is there any other items that we'd like to add to the outline? Do you want uh, Phil to talk? Then? No, but I want to ask the board this first. Is there any other? Well, that's, that's number, number six. six. Oh, number six. I need to bring my glasses. I'm <laughs> sorry, uh, Mr. Paradis. Are you ready for uh, number four? Number four. Good evening. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is Phil Paradis, professional engineer with Beta Group. We've been uh, hired by the town to review the plan. Um, so uh, generally, the the plan, um, you know, as 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 noted in our uh, letter, the plan appears to be uh, kind of sketched over an old plan, um, and a portion of it is, is does not include. The topographic. Uh, there's some, some features that should be um, identified. You know, steep slopes. Um, the the wetlands are 
Um, they're, they're proposing to cross three three wetlands. Uh, I recommend that 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 the uh, the wetlands be redelineated to make sure that uh, you know some of the features haven't haven't changed in the last uh, 15 years um, and such. Um, <coughs> So, as, as was mentioned, the, this property is, is uh, uh, undulating. It's got a significant topographic changes uh, throughout the site. There's, there's obviously the low wetlands. Um, and uh, you, uh, as, as you drive off Wood Street, you go down a, a probably about a 12 to 14 foot gravel dr drive. Uh, and it goes down, then it goes fairly steep up on the other side. and. Um, and so I think it's important to understand, in order to build a, a, a subdivision, what those what those profiles might look like, and what what kind of impacts those that the, the grading uh, would have on, on the topography. So I think, in order to to, to, to understand the impact of the yield plan and in the open space, I, we recommend that uh, preliminary profiles or just rough profiles be. Well, the wet, yeah, the wetlands, uh, the, the yield plan uh, discusses, uh, well, shows three wetland crossings. Uh, I think, I think uh, the, the subdivision plan can be uh, reconsidered to, to possibly just, just have two. Um, the two, two wetlands where it loops around and comes back, I think that's, uh, that might be better served by with a, just a, a, a cul-de-sac there. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't do the lotting, but but I think that would be much uh, much more amenable to the conservation in their in their pursuit of uh, preserving the wetlands. Um, Excuse me, for where where are you talking about a cul de sac? At the top, mm -hmm. and across the wetlands twice. Instead of having these okay. two roads two roads okay. come across, he's saying if we moved it here, okay, and then just have a cul de sac. Okay, great. So we don't allow cul de sacs and. <coughs> We don't allow cul de sacs in our conventional subdivisions. That, that's why we. That's why we did that. Yeah, that we don't we allow a special permit or some some waiver to get a cul de sac. Yeah, he has to show exceptional circumstances in order to get a cul de sac approved in conventional subdivision. Which we believe we could show. But I'm just but throwing that out there. And that is under our jurisdiction. That, that is, is under their yeah. jurisdiction. Just throwing that out there. Okay, um, having said that, um, uh, I think the calculation for the, uh, the, the total allowable number of buildings <coughs> in, on the application was, was not correct. I think I'm just going to recalculate that. And uh, OS1, OS2 uh, has already been discussed about the uh, the uh, dead end, the, the length of the dead end oh. streets, um, and I think I think it would be wise to have a loop system, much like your other subdivision that you, you've done. Yeah. Come back out to the street. And you mean, you mean Hunter's Ridge? Yeah, that's it. I couldn't remember the name. But yeah. <coughs> uh, I'm sorry, Ron. Where's where is that? Hunter's Ridge is off of uh, South Mill. Okay. <laughs> so I think a number, there's a, there's a few clarifications that the, so this, this lot looked like was part of, it was un unclear from the plan I had that this lot was part of the subdivision, also this one. Um, and then um, I think it's delineated wrong. I think agriculture is the outside and business is along. That, that's correct. So, even so, when we did all of our calculations and all of the um, all of the sizing of the lots, it's all based on agricultural. We just assumed the whole thing agricultural, so it wouldn't change any of the sizing of the lots or uh, the calculation for when we did the calculation for the uh, number of the yields for the lots. Uh, we did it all based on. Uh, the agricultural because it's the larger so we just went with the conservative so uh -huh. if it's depicted incorrectly I apologize but it wouldn't change 
um, wouldn't change the size or the layout of the lot. And one of the reasons there are no newer buildings in the front unless there's no other buildings being replaced that are already there. So it's in the front, I mean, this. Yeah, correct. The, ol the only thing we would be potentially doing is leaving that existing house. But no, there's nothing proposed in the front. And Phil, can you point out how long Whisper Way actually is on that? On that? Existing? 800. 800 feet? And then the high point of it is maybe. So, so this is where the parking is right now? Uh, it's, it's pretty close right to, the, the, to the property line down there. Yeah, I believe okay. so. Yeah. Good. I, I missed, I, I couldn't tell. It wasn't there. Yeah. And currently it's very steep um, coming off of Wood Street down then and, and up. So it, it would be an improvement when, it, when it's paved. Uh, but at the same time, it, 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 it needs to be looked at. It's oh, yeah. Yep. And again, this is, you know, this is definitely a preliminary plan. We would never have submitted, you know, that's an image in the background. And mostly just wanted to understand the viability of doing a project here uh, and, and what direction we needed to go in before we went through uh, and started finalizing profiles and, you know, that stuff all takes a significant amount of time and money and we want to make sure that what we're producing is something that, that you guys are all, in, you know, in general um, agreement with. Are there any questions for Phil? I, I, one question, Mr. Project Manager. Uh, did I understand correctly that the lot sizes with the open space plan are going to be essentially the same as the conventional plan, or are they going to be a little bit smaller? With no, the they're, space they're about half the size. About half the size. Yes. And that's in order to allow 60% of open space that you're looking for. Correct. So we're going to be more compact. Yes. I have, I have uh, one question. What's the change from lowest point in elevation to the highest point? It's about 150 feet. Okay, so it's pretty yeah. significant. It is. Uh, the, the highest point is, uh, I believe, up in this area where we're not really proposing any work. Yeah. So you're, you know, it's, I would say it's still close to 100 feet that we're okay. going to. How about on the street, the highest point? On which The street, street you're proposing? The, the actual street you're proposing. So uh, we didn't grade that out. That's what but it'll be less than that, I'm assuming. Oh, uh, yes. I don't Maybe 75 or something like that. Who knows? Yeah, we, it would be as much as it would be as much as we could do, basically with it staying relatively close to the there's percentages of slope that we're allowed to work within. Um, you guys are most likely allowed to uh, grant waivers on that, and we could potentially be looking for uh, waivers on the the percentage slope. But um, that's I think if you could get back to us with the highest level on the street, because to me that's where the most severe cutting is of the, the cuts that would be required. Yeah. That just be, would be helpful. And that's something that we need to. The, they're going to take Phil's comments about yeah. the topography and yeah. come back with something that's more workable. Thanks. And then one other comment. If you've looked at the decisions of the board and discussions, uh, safety to and why the discussion on the second uh, means of egress is, is emergency response to all of the homes has a elevated uh, attention from the board. So although we are very, very careful about wetlands crossings, et cetera, we, we don't necessarily hold uh, strict limits on that where we feel that it might be detrimental to the safety of the uh, homeowners, future homeowners in the development. Agreed, and that's why we made it a point to speak with the, the fire chief to um, get his take on what he felt was uh, safe, uh, proper, safety, like proper yeah. safety for the future residents. Uh, and I know one of his comments was that fact that we're bringing water, you know, where actually you already have homes that don't have um, fire, they, they, not that they don't have water, they don't have fire suppression right now. 
Um, so by bringing by bringing the water main into the subdivision, that um, <coughs> is a substantial safe safety increase. Um, and then also the second uh, means of access is out of is. is what he needs to be able to get an emergency vehicle into the subdivision to get to the um, to get to the residence. So, you know, and I certainly can understand wanting to have a, a second access for many reasons, but um, that that was our try. We were trying to balance, like I said, the uh, environmental standpoint with what the the fire chief felt was um, safe. Access. Uh, thank you. Unless there's any other questions for Phil right now? I, or have. I, I didn't get through. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, because we need to take a look at 925. Uh, do we have some other things tonight? What's it, 925? A25. A25. Oh, yeah. 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 We can, it's fixed yet. We can skip the five minute break if we have to. I just have a question. Uh, well, I like to. I like we to keep we have questions too. Um, he needs to finish. Well, I have a question about our process. How, if I can, oh. if I had, Phil, how long do you think you need to finish? Uh, just a couple more minutes. I just wanted to point out. Okay. So I what we'll do is we'll just this, we'll uh, push and then we'll open this public hearing and mm -hmm. then delay and then kind of push move it down, back. push things mm -hmm. back a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, SW3, uh, Lot 17 didn't have any property lines. I just, I wasn't clear if that was. Just to know if, if that adding the property lines would, would take away from the open space area. You know, I don't know if that calculation was weak. Um, so is uh, so the, the requirement so buffer zone is 100 feet. Um, there's a portion of, of in the real lot here where it, it's not 100 feet. Um, so I think that sh that should be discussed. Also, this parcel right here. Um, is, is going to be impacted by bare path and is, is also within the 100 foot buffer. Uh, so that's and, a, and that's a big buffer thing. on the wetland and like a mm -hmm. vernal pool that's in that area on, on the downside of the slope. That Say that again? It's it's within the buffer of the of the wetland area, or, or is it like a vernal? Yeah, yeah. You got a crossing here, but it's also you you're like you got to check to make sure you're not making this a non-conforming lot, right? Right. Putting a road there. And then um, and then also the open space. The, there are uh, uh, basins shown in the open space area. As well as the uh, portions of the, the of the uh, septic system are, are, are also shown. Now, I, I think your, re your regulations allow you to put the the base, the storm basins in there, but I don't know about the the uh, this septic. Charge. That's it. <coughs> so, Mr. Chair, I just have a question about our process. So we review the conventional plan and then we come back and review with the open space plan. I understand that concept, but does it make sense to go through all this in detail about the yeah, conventional that's plan? Or that's, not what you, that's not how you do it, though. What are you saying? We have to, okay, we're just doing the conventional plan for approving a number of lots and then we're going to yes. go through this for the open space yes. plan? Yes. Okay, that's what I just want to say. <coughs> so right now we need to take a break, but first we need to open the hearing and put it aside. Well, do we Green Street? You want to schedule a site walk before you do anything else on this? Do you want to jump to that? Do we? Do you want to continue this hearing for? Uh, in other words, you want to not give it to continue it, so, but you want to cover anything else tonight? <coughs> what do you suggest? Does the board have any other I, questions I, that? I have a big, big picture question. Um, are you planning on filing with the CONCOM? Uh, absolutely. Okay. When is that happening? Um, <clears throat> when I get a read that, uh, that that the board views that everything is uh, somewhat approvable in the form that we've represented. So, 
I'm know. just going to say from for myself, from what we've learned and what we've been talking about, it's hard to get a read when there is so much wetlands issue here if we don't have a little bit of information yeah. there. Um, and I, is it also in the Water Resource Protection Overlay District? Did I read it that? Yes. Yep. So I, I, I mean, for me, I'm speaking for one person, um, I'm going to feel that I need to understand those issues better. Yeah. We, we, so the, the, the land was covered, was, is, was under an or in an um, and that was in 03. So that would have expired in 06. So it's not like we're we're just guessing at the wetlands. Mm. They've been located and approved by the Conservation Commission at one point in time. And so that permit expired either in 06 and possibly later with the Permit Extension Act, but we're not sure. It doesn't matter. Okay. But but it is but there was one in place. <clears throat> and we do have a wetland specialist here that, <coughs> that has walked the site and and um, found a lot of the old flags and he thinks that it's going to be very similar to to, to my colleague's point, though. I think that it's a process that uh, we're trying to work out and make smoother. But uh, generally, I would like to know if the Conservation Commission uh, has a solid grasp and understanding of the situation and gives us feedback. At, on the planning board, mm -hmm. so we can make a more informed decision. Uh, in general, your ideas are here, and there's, there's feedback. Um, but until we actually get feedback from the Conservation Commission, it's uh, yeah, it, it's hard for us to to get a solid grasp of what sure. the situation is. Yeah. So, and this is again, it's it's a difficult process because there's you know you do have different boards that are looking at different pieces of the project so but coming here and finding out from you guys that you you know I guess getting a better idea from you whether or not you're comfortable with the 12 foot wide driveway versus you know which doesn't require nearly as much with the Conservation Commission versus a full 20 foot wide road that's a significant difference for us to go to them with so mm -hmm. you know that's I think that's what we're trying to get a, a good idea of what it is you got, what you're looking for so that we can um, make the most of our time with them as well it, so so one thing on the on the second means of egress is you know I have spoke to the fire chief I mean we're we've gone over this every which way and um, so he mentioned the 12 feet and it, he said he would go for his driveway standards so 12 he would be happy with this driveway standard, which is a 12 feet wide and then two foot level on either side um, and that's for his massive fire truck, men and equipment. And, um, and then, so after that, I went up to uh, Roosevelt Farms off of Fruit Street, and I measured that, that <laughs> one-way road. Their access road, yeah. Right. Um, the colonnade? Yeah, the colonnade. And that's um, 13, 13, it was, it was under 13 and a half feet between the, the inside of the berms. So, I don't know, I just, we just, Kind of throw that out there, and that and that's a larger subdivision, and um, it's a pretty it's a pretty comfortable road to drive down. It's just something maybe some board members could take a look at it and, and consider that. That would be uh, that would be appreciated, and I think it would be helpful with Concom as well. But I hear you on the twenty, and so just wanted to throw that out. If I can. My suggestion would be is to go to CONCOM with the 20 if CONCOM decides that okay. that is too much of an intrusion yep. and a reduction is preferred by CONCOM. I think we would look at that and take that into I consideration. I definitely think that's yeah. a good okay. Which is why we away. suggest going to CONCOM. Yeah. We have gotten into a, some situations where the timing of the meetings hitting and I know it's which comes first, chicken or the egg. Exactly. But I think if you you might have enough feedback now to give you a comfort level to go to Concom. The only the other obvious thing to me is on your conventional plan that double crossing that has what four four lots directly involved. Yeah. Um, you know that that might change your yield plan, but ease your development plan. You know, depending on what Concom says. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, while we're on the conventional plan, 
Phil, your comments were, it seemed like they were directed more on the open space plan. Do those same comments apply to the conventional plan at all in terms of <coughs> buffer requirements and um, some of those comments? Because I, I, I'm still trying to get to BAS step one, and that's approval of the conventional plan for the number of lots that the applicant has proposed. So just, we need to get step one before we get to step two, and I'm not quite 100 percent there on step one yet. Well, it's actually step so, eight C. <laughs> <laughs> so there are uh, there are no buffer requirements for a, a, a standard subdivision, um, so that doesn't apply. Uh, but I do think having an <coughs> idea of what kind of earthwork impacts uh -huh. and uh, wetland impacts would be um, just to, to figure <coughs> out, make sure that all the lots are buildable as shown. The layout would be okay, but just to make sure that they're buildable. Okay. And, and we've gone over this plan with uh, the wetlands uh, scientists to make sure that they agree that this plan is um, developable uh, part of our due diligence. We actually have to see that too. Completely more officially. I just, I'm, and well, we have no problem finalizing this, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to let you know that we did. I, I'm seven the schedule sidewalk. If you'd like to uh, oh, do yes. that right mm -hmm. now, it would be a so, good point yeah. to uh, take a. a Break on this <coughs> section, can so I open and, and something? The, are we missing a hearing? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna skip. Uh, no, the hearing. Can we just uh, yeah, vote well, if he open? Wraps the sidewalk. We can just call it. In we'll just open and continue because we're six minutes late on the public. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay. So if we can schedule a sidewalk with the uh, board and the uh, developers and the family. Uh, <coughs> Thanksgiving morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before the football game. <laughs> At Cornell. 8 a.m. I'm just going to open my schedule. Um, I'm going to suggest the weekend after Thanksgiving. 25th or the 2nd? What about the 18th? Or this Saturday? Uh, it's not Thanksgiving. The 18th. Is it? I cannot um, do the 18th. Okay. And the 25th is tough for me. I can't do the 25th. I mean, it, I, I, I will. Would be tough. Huh? That's Thanksgiving. Yeah, it, it, I did right. Okay. Well, you said the weekend after Thanksgiving, so that's why I was saying. I, I, I know, and I, I uh, apologize. So, like, I was December thinking. 2nd, December 2nd. December 2nd. Look. December 2nd. Okay. I don't know the state, but uh, I, I know the property. Uh, I don't know deep into it, but I'm pretty familiar with the front part of it. I would love to walk around it. but. Uh, I can do the second. Mm -hmm. I can do the second. Mm -hmm. I hate to push it too much too in much December farther. and have the weather change on us. Yes, I'll expect you to have nice dry weather, no <laughs> slipping inside. <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll do our best. So, so December second at nine a.m. Nine a.m. Nine a.m. Where will we meet? I would suggest um, the uh, park lot for the trails. Oh, I would think at the trailhead. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I do apologize, I'll be. Out of state. <coughs> we will represent you well. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, just so we're all on the same wavelength, there was a quick note about Hunter's Ridge. Is that which street is that? Is that Penny Meadow or is that a different one? Off of South. Off of South. No, South. No, what's the name of the street? Hunter's Ridge. It Hunter's is Hunter's Ridge. Ridge. Okay, I didn't see the I'm going to, I'll drive around. It's a newer street. Okay. Is it, is it representational? Is that why we talked about it? Uh, Hunter's Ridge? Hunter's Ridge? Yeah. I'm not, I can't I remember why. Phil brought it to the oh, you get so the, loop, the loop, the loop. Right. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's off South Mill, and there's okay. it's it's the subdivision sign. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's on Google Maps. Do I need motion to that? For a continuation, <coughs> then, do you want to do December fourth? And Honey yeah. Bridge has your uh, country drainage, and I think that's about the best we can do with it. Um, okay. We put sod in it. We okay. did the we work and work and work it. Um, Okay. So I don't know. motion to continue this hearing till December 4th. At what time? 7.30. 7.30. So moved. Second. So it's been moved to second. Any discussion? <coughs> Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Aye.
so it passes. It's after the site walk that we'll have yep. a solid grasp of it. And any new information needs to be in our office by the Tuesday before at 5 p.m. or the board doesn't look at it. We're really serious. Oh, we're about so that. serious we about sound that. Very yeah, we are serious. About it. <laughs> we are very, we are very bad about it, but we're so public serious public. about that. It's, it really is about noticing the public. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Before we officially close, is there anyone from the public that has anything to say briefly about this? As because we're still at the very beginning of the process, but does anyone come back tonight, <coughs> McIntyre? No. So if you want everybody at home to hear your words of wisdom, you have to come to the microphone. So what I'm going to do is, can we have a uh, motion to open the public hearing of 143 Spring Street and actually continuance for five minutes and we'll take a five minute break. So back. moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're back in five minutes.
really well. It's going to be a process, though. How are you? How are you? Good. 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 Good.
it's either very convenient or a coincidence, but um, <coughs> when you commented that it's going to help the line of vision for the street, it's going to help everyone. No. In some ways, it's a bad thing, very bad, but the Cedic Roadway is, is about trees and stone walls and keeping the New England uh, nature of, of our town intact. And I really don't want to have a, another house built tearing down all the trees. Um, so I, I would like to hear more information, of course, but looking at the plan, it's dead, 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 dead. Well, how convenient. You know, maybe there's another problem that we should be looking at <laughs> if we have all these dead trees. They, they are right on top of the, the road, so I'm I mean, just guessing. Is it road salt? I mean, they could be. Very well, could be. John, do you want to touch on uh, your experience? I will just confirm uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, that they are, in fact, dead, uh, long been dead. Uh, I have no information as to why that occurred, um, but. I believe that these dead trees, that it is in the public interest to have them removed and not at the town's expense in this case. Um, so I, I think that this would be a benefit to that roadway that we're removing dead trees that would either fall or have to be removed at the town's expense. Right, and over the years, as John mentioned, that they've probably been dead a decade or more. Yeah. And through various storms, you can see massive branches have just either fallen up I'm sure in the road sometimes, but on her property other times. It's, it is a hazard to, to overhead wires and to, to vehicles. In the photos that you provided, there's, there's leaves on the trees. Those are the living ones. The majority of the trees you see in the photos are on private property, are on the property. The, the trees that are between the, the edge of the pavement and the stone wall are the trees we're talking about tonight. Uh, can you touch on, so we're talking about the trees that are proposed being removed are a five inch oak and a 24 inch oak? Correct. And those are, um, if you're looking at the, the lot from the street, <coughs> on the left hand side as you, as you pull in the driveway. Well, on the plan it also lists five other trees along the front of the property. You're right, the dead ones. The dead ones. Dead ones. Right. right. Now, we located all trees over six inches in diameter. Or, and know, all those trees will be, will be taken down. Correct. Now, John, you, you were saying you were tree warding in West Boylston for eight years. How, this is the most trees in one property that I've seen have had an issue like this since I've been involved in the Conservation Commission and Planning Board in eight years. I don't, I've never seen this many trees be dead on one property. And are there other trees dead along the same street? Uh, it's. Is this a real issue uh, that should be looked at, or is it just localized to one property? I don't, I don't understand how this could be so compact an issue if it's just one property. Or uh, through the chair, I haven't had the opportunity to look at the extent of Spring Street. It is, um, I would say it's uncommon to have this many dead trees <coughs> in one location, uh, but just having taken over as tree warden over the past three months, um, you know, this is the first time that I've been able to look at this, so I have, I have no idea why these are dead. And again, they've, they're long since dead. They are, they're a hazard. Uh, by leaving them there, they're a hazard and would have to be otherwise removed. But I don't have any information as to how these all came to die next to one another. I think if I can, uh, and Fran, you and I had walked when we did the mm. uh, walk yes. with NSTAR, mm. Eversource, yes. and there were a, a lot of dead trees <laughs> <laughs> yeah. along yeah. our roads. I, I, don't think, I don't think this is unique necessarily yeah. per se, mm. although I couldn't speak with any degree of authority, but I think just visually walking down and doing the ribbons when we did with NSTAR, at least on Front Street there or Ash, there were yeah. there was a number, yeah. right? And we, just, we yeah. don't do anything about them. But I think here if you have a situation where you can remove some of those ones that you know, to his to to his comment, uh, you know, there are potentially, if not a safety issue, a hazard at some point in time. There are going to have to come down potentially at the town's expense. So, the applicant's willing and to, to 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 address that, you know. And I think you've got you know those two live trees, right? The twenty four and the five inch oak, um, that are going to be part of that removal. Um, yeah. It is what it is. 
Thank you. That. I mean, it's too bad that you have to remove the 24-inch tree, but the natural break in the stone wall, that makes sense to be right. the place where you're going to do the driveway. So sure. this, I don't have an objection. Uh, three, Mr. Chairman, is there a possibility, because there is a natural break there, um, is there a possibility, instead of removing the larger 24-inch oak, of moving the driveway to what would be the east, still taking advantage of that natural break, but you'd have to, you'd just have to open the wall up on the easterly side. That that would save that 24-inch oak. Is that a possibility? Uh, the 24-inch oak lies almost dead center of the of the driveway opening at the street. So I think if you were to save that and move the driveway, I guess you're looking west. East. Uh, north is to the down. Left. To the left. <laughs> Left or the right? Just to the left. left. To the left. To the left. So north is down. I see. Yeah, right. so if you move, were to move that, yeah, you'd be removing mature. I see what you're saying, yeah. You'd be removing some mature, uh, I'm not sure, but well defined stone wall. Right. Yeah. But, uh, so it's. And, oh, I, I take that one? back too. Right. There's With, trees. If I could, the, uh, the frontage for the lot line. Oh, I, I see. Just remember this. Yeah, the minimum frontage comes right at that pinch point, almost at the end of the stone wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Disregard. No, but appreciate oh. the, the attempt. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Three, Mr. Chair. Yes. So, kind of to Frank's point that, you know, seeing the road should be scenic, mm -hmm. can't we just remove the, the trees so you can build the driveway? And, and that was that was part of Diana's... Uh, just the three of them? The talk of, talk of it. They, 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 uh, they would need to be one, two, three, four... There's, there still need to be four to build the driveway, but you would not have um, any sight distance associated with entering and exiting that driveway without taking down the dead trees. So the physical, you'd have to pull your car out quite far because these trees are literally on the pavement. And it's, it's, a, it's a hazard. We don't particularly have an investment in saving the dead trees, I hope, right? Yeah. Well, it's just that I think Dead could be a, a gray line, right? I mean, if it's if it's got. Well, I, I think we've got. I mean, you say it's dead. Uh, it's dead, right? I understand. <laughs> just from an aesthetic's point of view and, and screen. Dead, dead, that doesn't mean that they go away. That means that they have responsibility to plan new ones. If, if I could, I, again, I think this goes back to something you said earlier about safety being paramount. I mean, if we have dead trees that are potentially going to fall across the road or on a car or whatever, um, I, I don't think we should be arguing the the saving of dead trees. But we, sh we should be arguing a replacement of dead trees. <laughs> Excuse oh. me, discuss So we can add say conditions to replace yeah. trees, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's a seri serious question because it is With safety versus... With lime trees, please. <laughs> what, what um, just just to, not to put too <laughs> fine a point on it. Not to, 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 to jump in, but okay. I, I don't okay. believe the board has jurisdiction over dead trees yes. <laughs> um, under the scenic road by law. Yeah. And that I think that's why Kobe kind of worked so hard to point that out during the process. Right. But we do have jurisdiction over the old tree that's on the corner of the driveway, which is apparently a linchpin for the whole project. So if you'd like to cut down a 24-inch living tree, <coughs> let's talk about what we can do to replace the dead trees, which apparently are plenty of them. So let's make a positive out of uh, you know, the five negatives. Uh, just to, to, to weigh in, Mr. Chairman, um, this is a single property owner who wants to put their house in there. They're, uh, my my confidence is in that they want their property to be as aesthetic and and pleasing as it can be, as well as safe. And um, I just don't think we need to um, to belabor the point. I think we're going to give uh, we would vote to give this person access to the property in the best possible way. And the least attractive portion of the stone wall, and we all love our stone walls, and, and mostly dead trees, seems to be <coughs> an excellent effort to uh, minimize destruction. I, I, I'm sad about the big tree, too, but I'm sure she is as well. I mean, we all like our trees. We all like our wooded, wooded lots. And, and she needs to access her property okay, to build her short. house. No, no I, think, I think that's valid, and I don't think we're really believer, and I think what we're what we're trying to do is understood that these trees might have to go to dead trees, but to Frank's point, do we plant some new trees on the property to compensate for that? I'd, I'd like to know a little bit more about it. I think that's well, that's one of the suggestions here in the, <coughs> in the memo, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Compensatory so, I mean, actions. We have to talk about it, though. So. Okay. 
right? So you want to so bring trees? up what they're suggesting? If, yeah, well, if I, if I could, just real quick, it's private property, right? I mean, we can't. No, but they're cutting, it's quid pro quo kind of thing. We're approving them the ability to cut down trees, and we're, we can ask for trees to be reconnected. I think that's part of the bill. Well, let, let me review it a little bit. In a scene, road by law, uh, the 24-inch tree is living and it is in the right away of the town, covered and protected by the scenic road bylaw. So I'm suggesting that to give permission, this board to give permission, that's our authority, uh, to trade off, we would ask them to replant the other trees that are dead to make it better. Along where the dead trees are, so, can I? But, but I'm going oh, kind of moving it along because we can argue back and forth. Uh, what we would normally do is kind of a one for one replacement of the, the trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I suggest to kind of compromise with it and the fact that the replacements may not be as large as the 24 inch tree is if I threw out to the board four trees. Um, so the mitigation for the removal, the applicant shall plant to maintain four shade trees on the front of the lot on the private property. The species and size of the tree shall be subject to the approval of the tree warden. Would that be acceptable? I, I believe it would be. So just to clarify, not within the right of way, but on the right. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. right. Yes. Would that, to move things along? Fine. We're not in the right Changing way. two to four. If we change two to four, would that be acceptable? I'm fine with that. Kind of just mm -hmm. generally. But inside of the right away, inside of the street. No. No, no because no, the road, no. it's, I think you're going to run into the same problem. Behind, you, behind the, behind yeah, the, the private wall, property, right. But oh, in sight of the road is what you're saying. In sight of the road. So there are, there are, as you can see in the <coughs> pictures, there are many trees along the rest of the stone right. wall. Yeah. Right. So it, it may have to be 5, 10, 15 feet off the stone right. wall. Just so it survives and uh, just coordinate with the uh, subject to the approval of the tree warden. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make that motion. Okay, and then the second item would be the stones removed for the 10 foot driveway opening shall be retained on site and shall be used to fill in any existing gaps in the stone wall along Spring Street. Stones shall not be used on the driveway apron. Absolutely. Okay. Um, based on the discussion, somebody want to make a, uh, a motion? I make the combined motion of the what you mentioned about the stone wall and the uh, trees. The four trees. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? So we can take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Thank, Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John? Good to see you. And thank, thank you, our ladies and gentlemen. Quick, quick in and quick out. Acting yeah. tree warden. So let's close the motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So carried. Just for did we ask for public comment? We... Oh. No. I don't yeah. know that anyone's here to, to comment, but. Oh, good point. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a quick question as we're changing? Um, there's a reason we can't use the stones from the stone wall and the apron of the driveway. I just want to understand. It's on the board's practice that they don't prefer that, but this board prefers that. I think we can do that from now on, but previous boards did not prefer that you put them on to a private property because it's just these scenic glory stones. And so what happens to them if you don't put it on the apron of your private property? They're supposed to be filled in. They're filled in along the stone wall, along the yeah. scenic road. Correct. I see. For, for the public benefit. Mm -hmm. Not the Not private benefit. benefit. I got you. Next uh, item on the agenda, um, or back to, is continued public hearing, 147 Lumber Street, commercial solar photovoltaic special permit application and stormwater management permit application. Mm. Um, can we motion to open the hearing? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So carried. We have the applicant uh, up. 
Um, Mr. Chairman, before you proceed, you did receive an opinion from town council regarding the question um, you had asked, but um, it's considered attorney-client privilege until the board waives privilege, so okay. the board wants to make a motion. So I want to make a motion? I will make a motion to uh, make the decision public. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So we'll give a minute for Jennifer to distribute the... Okay. <coughs> and this was just received by us today. And can we in the future vote to waive the, waive the right or let the chair decide whether to waive the right of confidentiality? Because it would be nice to give it to the applicant in advance. I, I asked that too in, uh, earlier and in regards to the fact that we actually can't keep it right. Private, except that I suppose some decision could come in. Jennifer, can can the like board the vote to authorize me to? No. Wait, no. No, we can't. Yeah. The board, when they when they request the opinion, the board at that time could vote to waive privilege before it sees the opinion. If it doesn't, but it can be at the chair's discretion. So I have to check that with town well, council. Also, there's another option too. Can we? Can we vote via email? We're receiving it via email. No, you no. cannot do anything via email. Yeah. We know the answer to that right so up you front. See that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no touch. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. My name is Greg Carey, Director of Real Estate Permitting with Clean Energy Collective. Next to me is Ben Tricko, property owner at 147 Lumber Street. Also with me tonight, is Doug Carton, project manager with Clean Energy Collective, Rich Kleiman from Kleiman Energy, and Stacy Minahan and John Bensley from Fields and Thomas. Um, since our last hearing, we, uh, we uh, obviously got together and listened to some of the suggestions and comments that were made by the planning board members. We went back to the drawing board and looked at how we can improve our site plan and our project. We've made a number of changes which we think um, you'll, you'll like. We think results in a better project. And with your permission, I'd like Stacy and John to go through some of those changes yes. and give you a summary. Thank, Thank you. you. Could I just ask you to turn it a little bit? I, I can't see. Thank you. That's perfect. No. Stacey Minahan with Beals and Thomas. Um, so I'll uh, run through the changes and of course if you have any questions. Um, so as Greg mentioned, uh, CEC took a, a very detailed evaluation of, of the layout of the solar panels um, and the proposed project and there were really three areas um, that were revised, three categories um, and I think at least one of them was discussed before, two of them really, but screening, um, stormwater management and then wildlife habitat. So. With regard to the solar panel layout and the screening, um, along the entire easterly portion of the array, you see the northern portion of the easterly array here, but <coughs> that entirely easterly, entire easterly extent, um, CEC was able to pull all of the panels outside of the 100-foot buffer zone, so further from the uh, abutting properties. And the proposed screening was also extended to the northern limit of work. So there is now a full um, proposed screening of the Green Giant Arbor BD. I believe the board had also asked for some consideration as to it including different species. And so eastern red cedar um, can also be mixed in, and that's been added to the plans mm -hmm. as well. So some significant screening proposed and then pulling the panels back along that easterly array. I think at the <clears throat> last hearing or hearing before a stormwater bond was discussed, so CEC has identified a $10,000 10-year $10 stormwater bond uh, with regards to the stormwater management system. There were no other issues outstanding with regard to stormwater management. And then we also made several revisions, largely in response to feedback from the Conservation Commission to address wildlife habitat concerns. One of them was moving those panels outside of the buffer zone along this easterly array, incorporating the screening plantings, which also provide habitat, um, creating within the 100-foot buffer zone that would be disturbed a pollinator meadow habitat with a conservation wildlife seed mix, um, and also clusters of high, val high habitat value shrub plantings interspersed throughout areas within the buffer zone that are not constrained by stormwater management areas. Um, we incorporated a double gate 
between the westerly array and the easterly array to allow a gap, essentially, the fence gets a little bit larger. Wildlife can pass through there. As we discussed before, the fence will be lifted off the ground for a smaller wildlife passage. <coughs> and I believe that's it, actually. We continue to meet all of the Conservation Commission um, required setbacks with regard to the wetlands. Overall, the work in the buffer zone was reduced um, by just under 13,000 square feet over the original plan that was filed. So we were able to reduce impacts. You, you may want to um, also uh, point out the uh, alternative uh, screen uh, that, that we're proposing, the red bagel. So, yes, so along that easterly um, array, the edge that was originally um, Green Giant Arbor Reedy, mm -hmm. every three to four we're proposing to intersperse with eastern red cedar as well to add some additional wildlife habitat value and just a little bit more diversity. I mean, I just, I'd like to say thank you. I think that's great. I think you really listened to what we said about the, um, the screening, and it sounds to me like you guys... Uh, really put a lot of work and effort into that, so thank you. Thank you. I do, I do also want to point out uh, the chairman at the last hearing uh, encouraged us to reach out to some of the neighbors, and uh -huh. uh, I have a couple of Saturdays ago, I met with a couple of the neighbors at their properties to look at uh, some of the issues, and uh, screening obviously was paramount, and uh, I've told those owners that we're willing to work with them uh, to see if there's additional things we could do to help. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Any comments from the board on the screening? Any comments from the public on the screening? I'm one of those neighbors. Okay. Want to come up to the microphone? Sure. Chris Haddock Road, 22 Alexander Road. And yes, we did meet um, along with um, and we didn't come to an agreement about anything. If they proposed that they would put together a proposal, we haven't seen a proposal. And I believe that for our property, we don't, if we were going to plant on our property, we would use our backyard. So we're not really looking forward to having more plantings on our yard because our yard is right up against the wetlands. So we would be losing most of our yard by having a plant in there. So. Thank you. Are there discussions related to uh, the neighbor's property? Any additional plantings that you would look to do beyond what you just described, if it's? We're, we're willing to meet with okay. anyone who has a concern Yes. Okay. Should we hope? Should we keep this open until there's further meetings and, and come back on that since we're I, as a, we're moving through? I'm amenable to keeping it open certainly, but I, I just want to recognize that um, the applicant has really worked hard to respond, um, and I really appreciate okay. all those efforts. Um, and I, I'm sure the neighbors do too, and I know that. You know, there's nothing that we can do that's going to eliminate the whole visual impact either. Well, we're hoping, uh, obviously, uh, the reason we proposed the 15 to 20 foot high evergreen shrubs is we, we think that that mass will, to a large extent, um, uh, provide adequate screening. Could it be 100% for everyone? No. I couldn't no. make that. <coughs> Together, together with the existing vegetation, especially in the wetlands, that's not going to be touched at all. Um, we think we've done, you know, a, a pretty good job of uh, trying to mitigate it. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I, I know that we like to follow the um, the outline, but I do have a question uh, based on something that you said about the double gate um, and the. Uh, fence being off the ground. Can you can you describe what that opening looks like in the gate? Sure. So it's essentially, um, and John can point it out, but as if you have two fences next to each other. So there's a gap 
where there's no fence blocking it. So you have, as you're going from the westerly array to the easterly array, you go through a gate, you're outside of the fence, it's open, and you go through another gate, and you're back inside the other fence. How wide is the gap? Oh. Uh, about 23 feet or so. I think it's about 25 feet. Oh. Okay, so I, so I actually, I mean, I know I wanted to, we want to talk about safety later. I'm just, I'm curious about being able to access the panels through the gate. The, if a child were to get back there, could so they get through it, I guess is what I'm No, the gate is the standard gates, uh, John, correct me if I'm wrong, but that are being close. used elsewhere on the fenced area that comply with the... Okay, I'm just, I was just trying to understand yeah. the, the opening. Yeah, That's it's all. basically just that we cut a section, if you think of it as it was connected before, we cut a section out yeah. and added a gate on each end so that someone oh. can still drive mm -hmm. through it to yeah. access I the see. other one. Okay, yeah. I misunderstood what you were saying. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, along those lines, I, I thought it was a, a pathway as opposed to a. Yeah, I was thinking it was an opening, like oh. a, an open. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, let's move on to the. Uh, are checking out screening, or are we? Well, we're going to hold it, revisit it at the end, mm -hmm. event for any additional information. Okay. Uh, going to seven E array size. I believe we addressed that at the last hearing, but if you want to review it again, we're happy to do it. Yeah, just summary of it because we have to move down the. Uh, the the <coughs> array size is uh, uh, approximately 2.6, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 2.6 megawatts on, uh, I believe, 11 acres. And that includes um, a reduced uh, property line buffers? It, uh, reduced buffers on the eastern edge of the eastern array. That's correct. Okay, I, I definitely want to talk about those at some point, specifically to just get a sense of where the board feels, because that makes a big difference for the applicant on, on the array. How much, how much of an impact is that on your array size? So and viability. Oh, sorry. And you're referring, just to clarify, about the request for alternative screening that we have before the board, right? No. I'm talking about the request for um, a reduced buffer zone between the property with uh, the applicant's property and the uh, rod and gun right. and the applicant's and the, property. Yes, yep. Oh, so we are talking the about the I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. So the, the regulations allow for alternative screening requirements. Okay. Um, I, I, where, you, where you don't have that 75 foot. I mean, it's a, it's a significant impact because it's the entire, um, I'll just say that microphone. It's the entire, um, you know, northerly portion and westerly portion where we would lose. We, yeah, um, we could tell you that um, <coughs> from the original submission of our site plan, we have uh, reduced the panels by approximately 1,170, I believe. Mm -hmm. Their exact locations, I, I couldn't yeah. tell you right now, but okay. it's been a significant reduction. Out of a to original total of? I think it was 8,500. 8, 8,750 originally. That's 7,560. 7,560 now. Okay. okay. So 13.5% reduction. Okay. And that reduction has been primarily on the eastern edge? Mm -hmm. It's really spread all over the the entire array. Any public comments on the array size? You want to come up to the microphone, your name and address, please. Tina Rose, 28 Alexander Road. Uh, I just need a clarification as far as the, the, buff, the arrays that are in the buffer that you asked, because we just came out of the Conservation Commission meeting, and the comments there were that uh, several of the members want more arrays moved out of the buffers. The property line buffer or the? It's a different buffer. They're talking about a wetland buffer. This right. is a property line buffer. But we were still talking about arrays and buffers. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm, I'm not sure if this is the mm -hmm. section where I was supposed to bring, mm -hmm. but I, I just wanted a clarification on that because I thought that the comment was made that you met all of the Conservation Commission buffer with yep. the array. So. Uh, I can clarify that. So uh, the Conservation Commission bylaw and regulations have very specific performance standards for a 50 foot no disturbance area within 50 feet of a wetland, a 50 to 75 foot no structure area and then 125 foot no touch zone from a vernal pool and we meet those criteria um, what was discussed at the conservation commission were members discussing work within the 100 foot buffer zone which is also a jurisdictional area but is not stipulated in their bylaw regulations as a no touch zone it's an area where work needs to be reviewed um, and so that was being discussed at the commission here so moving some of the arrays out of right. some of those buffers. That's what some of the members discussed. And so my comment about we need the performance standards for those no touch, I'm referring specifically to the 50 to 75 and the 125 that are outlined in the bylaw. Yep. Okay, thank you. And do you feel there's gonna be in discussions with CONCOM, further discussions on that? That was a left at CONCOM. It was, we were continued until the uh, okay. uh, November 27th. 27th at 7.30. So we'll keep that open because of the fact that it's still under discussion with CONCOM. Um, let's jump back a little bit because we distributed the uh, letter uh, from council, kind of go back to driveway with and discuss. Why don't we discuss the letter from town council? Jennifer, do you want to briefly? I'm sorry, I missed that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I think discuss the going back on the driveway to discuss that. Uh, I spoke with the fire chief, and um, the issue was you had, you're showing a 12 foot wide driveway throughout the pan into the panels. Correct. That was the question, but um, the fire chief said that there you are also showing the two foot shoulders on either side and so he was happy right, right, with that. Good. Yep. And why don't we tie in with that just the discussion on town council letter. Um, so the questions from town council was um, the variance that was issued in 2000 um, for the um, use of the driveway for a single family home could that also be used for this purpose for the solar panels. Um, council has ruled that because the variance says that it is for the purpose of a single family dwelling use and that no other access to the parcel shall be allowed, that uh, these two conditions specifically say that the access to the lot can only be for a single family dwelling. And in order to construct a sol solar phot photovoltaic facility on the lot, this condition will need to be removed or amended. Um, so he has given two options for the board to proceed. One is to proceed under the review um, and then condition, if the board chooses to approve of the project, to condition it that they would go back to the Board of Appeals to modify the variance or that the board spend, continue the hearing until such time that they get the variance modified. So I guess that would be the board's discretion how they wanted to proceed. Either way, the, in order to use that driveway, the variance needs to be modified. <coughs> so right. it's, it's either a addition of a second use or removal of the condition. Of the condition. Correct. Does the applicant have any idea? I know you just saw the opinion of which of those two. Uh, we don't. We really even had a chance to review it. Uh, but we certainly would be open to a condition from this board that subject to uh, going to the Zoning Board of Appeals. That, that's something that we think is reasonable. Get a feeling from the, that's the yeah. direction we want to go in? I'm comfortable with I, that. I think that's, yeah. okay. Well, I, there was a previous information from the town council and the four o'clock information, so I'm just kind of the no. information in our packet. No, that's their attorney looked at it. So there's two different attorneys looked at it. The applicant. No, no, I saw attorney. that, but also there was a, there was, in our packet there was information from. No, no, no this is the only from information from town packet. council for us. Um, I'm 
but I think the majority of the board sure. want to continue in the direction. And okay, I think I think it's fine the way it is, but um, and I'm sure that, that's how it will turn out. But I'm going to look at the rest of my packet and find out what I'm talking okay. about. Bring it up later. <laughs> Let's move to seven F underground utilities. Can you address it? So. Utilities on the site are underground. There's overhead wire. The wires along Lumber Street are overhead. Uh, we need to bring those onto the site with the utility pole, and then once we get onto the site, all the electric utilities uh, are run underground uh, in conduits along the driveway, and then up through the solar array. So, so it's addition of one pole? Yeah, it's the addition of one pole along and Lumber Street. Drivers. you want to on one of the plans show where it's located. Lumber Street here, the pole in here, and then you go underground. Okay. It was, sorry, just to clarify, it would be uh, two new poles, both utility owned. Um, okay. no, no new customer owned poles. Are okay. So and how far company. in from at, at within the right of way on Lumber Street? Oh. Uh, I think they come off uh, 70 feet. Yeah, roughly 60, 60 yeah, 70 feet. Here. So two it's poles about space roughly 30 feet apart. Okay. Uh, just for the utility on the equipment. From there, we would, we would have a riser that would go underground. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to invest in that. Any uh, comments from the board on the underground utilities? Any comments from the public? Can we give that a check mark. Sure, we'll just, sure, Mr. Chair, just one comment. Um, just input that uh, our preference is to underground everything, but I don't think we have any jurisdiction over this. What's that? They are. They, they are. They are. Underground. The two first two. Two additional poles. I mean, we, we have subdivisions. But, but the poles on the, on the street poles. are both brown. You got to somehow get it yeah, yeah. up. Yeah, you got to get up right? somewhere. <laughs> it's going down. Right? It, it's up and then down. But the ones on the street are up. So you somehow have to get it. Go down that one pole. Yeah, it's, uh, do they go down? Or do they go down? I mean, we just, if we have um, that in our mm -hmm. subdivision. If you think back to Legacy North, we shut down those two poles they wanted to get there we had to go underground for the pole that exists. I think that was an additional one pole. No, uh, Ken fought that. Um, remember they came back and said, nope, you don't have to put up one pole. That was uh, the Poplington News? No. No. Osmond. Legacy New Different regulations. So Different regulations. I can't enforce it here. I'm just saying yeah. that's okay. Right. Can we put a check mark? Yep. Under brand utilities. Uh, we've discussed, I know, stormwater management. Why don't you give a brief <coughs> review again of what was discussed and what the current status is? I, I can do that again, Mr. Chairman. John Benjamin, Bills and Thomas, the professional engineer. So, we have provided stormwater management. We did make a, a minor revision. We have some stormwater basins, very shallow infiltration basins. We requested the Conservation Commission. One of the basins we've modified. Uh, since the last time before here to provide a additional source of water for a potential vernal pool uh, at the southeastern side. So this basin here, which we've referred to as basin number two, we put a, an under drain in there, which essentially is a perforated PVC pipe uh, set in stone so that some water can go down into that and then it comes through a pipe, which then allows for flow down to this potential vernal pool to provide uh, a source of water through the, to that commission. Okay. A question about that, Mr. Chairman. Who manages that over time? Let's yeah, say five yeah, years yeah. down, ten years down, you guys do it, but we, we do. We have an operation and maintenance uh, division, the crew basically, that is responsible for maintaining the property. And in this case, we have also um, agreed to issue a surety bond um, for ten thousand dollars, in the event there was a a major event and the stormwater system failed, the bond could be used to pay for any repairs. And that group's accountable to who? Uh, Clean Energy yes. Collective. To you guys. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I guess if the 
a butters if there was an issue in some way, shape, or form. We, we would be responsible. It would go back to you guys. I feel like that gets lost in oblivion sometimes. Things like that. Following up on issues that in this type of environment seem great. They're going to follow up and do it, but accountable to who will <coughs> belong when. Well, Jennifer, if there's that condition. So under our stormwater management bylaw, we do, um, I know they've proposed a stormwater management surety for a 10-year, $10,000 bond. Um, we only allow five years. Um, the amount is open to the board. So you could, you could condition a surety. Um, for the maintenance of the stormwater management system for up to five years. I like that. And we're happy to mm -hmm. renew that uh, after the end of five years okay. for another five years. And does that also, Mr. Chairman, may I continue the line of questioning? Does that also address potential impacts to stormwater management as it relates to the runoff going down into some of the wetlands on the eastern side? Yeah, any failure, it would address any failure of the system if the system isn't designed, as, isn't operating as designed. Because that, that's my one big concern. Having walked the property, the angle or the slope is such that it goes down. It wasn't wet in the fall when we walked it, but I imagine if we were to do this same walk five months from now, that area would may look or feel under my feet a whole lot different. And my concern is the, the runoff, because you're getting rid of some of those trees, that's just coming straight down into that wetland area. And that wetland area, if that water table starts to rise, some of those people on Alexander may be adversely impacted. Sure. Well, I don't they, know, I, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, beta Engineering did a, a complete review of the stormwater design and has approved it as, as designed. But again, in the event there is a failure of the system, the funds will be there to restore, restore it and repair it. And if it goes above 10K? Um, if it goes above 10K, we'd still well, be responsible. I mean, yeah, that's it. just a bond so that if they don't do it, we have some we have something to go back to. Right. right. They'd still be that's, responsible to do the work. Yes. Okay. Right. Just, can, can I ask? Thank there, you. If, this, if it were to cause damage to the neighbor's uh, properties, to their basements or something, they would be responsible. They would be responsible. Okay. And you did say you were having continued discussions with CONCOM. Uh, yes, we got continued until the 27th. Okay, so stormwater management will leave that open for any changes that might develop from that. Continuance. We certainly can, although I believe that stormwater is closed out with the conservation commission in terms of the the comments. There were no additional. Yeah, we okay. yes, we don't. Oh, so there were no. Okay. okay. But I would suggest if there were to be issues, um, I have a property in Boston. And we had to deal with a similar similar thing, uh, similar but not the same. Uh, that the, each basement along that are abutters be reviewed and verified beforehand because uh, they hit have a, a delta point where this starts uh, and um, this is the state of each basement. Um, they are some of the houses are very close to the wetland. Um, as she pointed out, it's it's her backyard, so uh, any change. Um, it should be measured before anything happens and then to make it easier if something does happen to kind of differentiate what happened mm -hmm. before and after. So how do we as, as a board uh, ensure that there's a smooth... It's, 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 a, bit, it's a fair point. Yeah. Yeah. Jennifer, do we have the ability to do something like that? I have to review the stormwater. Can I, can I just can I just add an observation from from my perspective? That's that's a risk that the applicant takes. It's not really. I mean, if they want to do that work to protect their own interests, they're free to well, do that. The BRA uh, for our property and uh, properties on our street in Boston, they uh, set up monitoring devices because uh, it's all back base built to wetlands. <laughs> Um, and they set up monitoring devices to monitor any issues during construction of a large project. Different situation. But uh, <coughs> next spring, as Fran says, down the road, what oversight do we have uh, on, on things like this? Um, how do we take a, a best case scenario where everyone can understand this is our delta point and these are anything, this is anything that might have gone wrong? 
um, it protects both sides. So how do we? Three, Mr. Chair. Yeah. I, I'm seeing the same thing as Muriel. I don't understand how that protects the neighbors. That it would really just protect the applicant against a pre-existing condition that they don't come two years later and say, "Oh, look what happened here." I mean, what's the scenario that will protect the? Well, it protects neighbors. both sides. Like in, in the, I'm on a board of a house in the Back Bay, and there's a big nine-story building that I put up, and uh, they monitored wetness and structural. Uh, changes that could have happened and didn't but if anything did happen they would have been noted uh, from the from the devices that were measuring so oh, now well. I'm just saying photographs and records before uh, what does that I'm going to just so we can move on and whether it's open so why don't we put a tentative check mark on stormwater management mm -hmm. If Jennifer finds something that we should look at, we can reopen it and come I back. I think that's fine. I would, I would also just note that, I mean, I haven't finished looking yet, but you want to be just careful you don't treat this stormwater management system different. any different than you would treat Correct. another stormwater management system that agree. you would approve. So you don't require monitoring and right. pre implementation surveys of other projects i'm not sure that you would want to do that here right. Good yeah, point. I mean, Fair if, point. If, if it ever came up that it was protective of the town's interests or or you know something i mean i would certainly discuss it but i just don't see that it's right. um okay. something helpful right. so we'll put the i think we've spent enough time on a this. similar issue I, I, tonight I think, different scenario but same kind of issue where there was a developer and two neighbors and things didn't work out with the neighbors and a developer, and what do we do after the fact? Well, we have them come in and talk. And no, we shouldn't actually be involved in that. Yeah. So that's a proof. Okay, I'm going to put a yeah. let's move on from this. We're at, nice we only have uh, 20 minutes left, um, and we've got some other things. So we let's go on to the next item safety. Um, <coughs> I actually added that to the checklist. Um, I just had a quick, I just wanted to understand the opening at the bottom of the fence, how large it was. Six inches off the ground. Six inches off the ground. So looking at it, I think following up on that, because I think our concerns are the same, yeah. is children getting into the site. So just a one minute, what does the fence look like? What are we talking about? So it's six inches above the ground. Seven foot high chain link fence, six inches off the ground. We typically uh, tell our contractors to go no more than eight inches. Obviously, it varies with grades, but right. that's kind of the range that we try to stay within. So we try to keep it pretty tight because we have ran into issues where, you know, you say six inch minimum and now it's 14. So, right. we try to be pretty yeah. tight. Is there any other equipment outside of the fenced area? No. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? You can put a checklist next to safety. Any additional site walk feedback? I think it's been a lot has been incorporated in. Anybody want to make additional comments? No? Any comments from the public? Additional? Yes. Come up to the microphone, your name and address, please. Good evening, uh, Andrew Singer, 16 Alexander Road. Uh, as uh, uh, Greg had said two weekends ago, they, uh, he did come out, we did take a walk, we took a, a look around. Um, and it was my first opportunity to go to um, uh, the Hagberg's house and see behind there, um, gave me better perspective. The um, so in some of the plans that have been provided before, which showed the sight lines from the four different zones with the trees that are in there, um, I, the only comment that I wanted to make is that those, the actual trees that are there are much more mature, they're taller. And so, you know, whereas, whereas the drawings show the, um, the trees with, you know, branches and leaves and, you know, show blocking some of the view, the trees are in reality much taller and it's really just the trunks of the trees. And so, from the current grading and the current um, uh, angles, you can see clear through. Now, that's not to say that with the um, the plantings and the shrubbery and all that, that won't provide um, adequate 
um, screening. But from where it sits today, the views that you have and the views that are in those um, drawings, I would say are they're not they're not real life. They're not they're not true. Um, but I did also want to say that um, we have been having some conversations, and I don't think we're at a specific resolution, but the, it's been a lot of cooperation in terms of uh, talking about what we might be able to do to mitigate. Okay. Thank so you. if I just summarize, so what you're looking at is screening kind of below the branch level of the existing Right, trees. so some of the, the drawings that were provided before that showed from the back steps of some of the houses to right. the arrays looks like what, on the straight line you, they're naturally screened by the trees that are in the wetlands. Yep. Um, that screening isn't really there, it's just the trunks of the trees. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any follow-up questions on that? No, I did have one other question. On the site walk, some of the neighbors were from Daniel Road, I believe. And is there access to this parcel from Daniel Road, too? Or, or they would have to cross the town of Hopkinton land? I don't think there is. Are there any Actually, you can see it. Oh, I'm sorry, you can see it there. Yep, there's a little, looks like a, like the drawing of a road that's maybe not really a road that sticks out of Daniel. Yeah. Is this what you're looking for? It's probably yeah. an easement. It could be an easement. I mean, it's, I don't know if that's the other And it abuts the town of Hockington land or the parcel? Um, it crosses the property and ends at this town of Hockington land. Okay. There's a few of those uh, access points or easements that we have attorneys working on to see what the real access is. Okay. I think there's three of them. Uh, can I just ask, what's the concern in particular, or are you just? Well, if they can't access the parcel from Lumber, can they access it from Daniel? Okay. We're just about at 1045, and we have nine, nine, 945. 945, sorry. <laughs> I'm Very the other tricky. Thing. We're going to 11 o'clock uh, on yeah, okay. uh, clock time. <laughs> as opposed to, and we have other items on the agenda, so this might be a good point to break unless members of the board or the applicant wants to. Did we officially finish off sidewalk feedback? Any other? So can, let me just finish my point, was that I think it's preferable that the property be accessed from Lumber Street, where it's Mr. Turker owns that strip, rather than being accessed from someplace else like Daniel, which I don't know if that's a possibility or not, but. No. I wanted to point that out. Mm -hmm. I concur. Okay. For check mark. Check mark. <coughs> uh, continue the public hearing. What are we? Um, so we have the 27th is the next hearing, or we have the 4th. The 27th, we have a, a 7.30 with uh, Dave Del Torrio is going to come in and do a brief update on the downtown quarter project. For only 15 minutes, I'm told. Okay. Mr. Chairman, our uh, time with the Conservation Commission, so we didn't overlap again, is 7.30. Um, I was told it was 8.15, but I was just sent a message that it was 8.15. You just received it? For the 27th? Um, when, right when you guys continued, the administrator over there messaged me and said that they continued solar to 7. 1127 the, at 8.15. They originally continued to 8.15, and then the um, <coughs> commission offered to give us their business administrative time slot, which was at 7.30. Um, oh, so we know. left with the understanding it was at 7.30. You probably want to verify that yeah. then. Should we... So let's go over again. What's the agenda item on the next? <coughs> what do we have on the next? That's meeting? the 7:30 update with Dave Del Torrio, um, and I'm told that's only 15 minutes off. <laughs> Hope springs eternal. So a question. I mean, it's not mm. like you have an off. And then, how much time meetings. do we have available on the following so meeting? So she said 8:15, but they said if it conflicted with planning board, they would move it to 7:30. So you're okay. scheduled. For <coughs> yeah, and we would let them know. You're correct. Yeah. Now okay. the problem I see is if we have a 7.30 to 7.45, mm -hmm. which 
Do we? we downtown is going to be pretty. Yeah, yeah. Do we want to? How far? What I'm trying to see is, does it make sense get everything finished at Concom, not come to the next meeting, and then we put a more time available at the first meeting in um, December. December to try to wrap things up and have Concom done wrapped. Yeah, I I think correct me if I'm wrong, Stacy, but where we are with Conservation Commission, I'd be very surprised if our next uh, hearing took longer than a half hour. Uh, I do. I agree. So um, let's get a feeling on the board. What you want to put it on the next uh, meeting or beginning of December? I, I'm amenable putting it on the next meeting um, or or December. But if if we can do it with it, with allowing the public to have access to both, I'm fine with with doing it. At our next meeting, I would I would agree with Muriel. All right, if they can get it done, let's say half hour, forty five minutes, and we can put it on the agenda for eight thirty yeah. or eight fifty. I mean, something Cornell break between. I think that would work. We could do some Cornell break. Is that what you said? <laughs> my, my point is to give them enough time at Con Common to come back over here. Right, I understand. I'm saying I'm just, uh, making you guys aware that you have a seven thirty yeah. for fifteen right. minutes and nothing else. So right. I, I, I like I was, John's uh, suggestion, frankly. About uh, putting it on December, beginning of December. Can I, and I, I don't necessarily have a serious, serious objection, but can I ask? We, we had wanted to talk to the emergency personnel. That might Our be. Fire some, chief is not, he's on vacation. On okay. All right. I already checked. Okay. <laughs> yep. So we only have the one thing on the agenda. So it seems to me, I think it makes sense to me to sit it by or, or do the master plan? I, I sound like I'm advocating yeah, hard for the 27th. I'm not really, but I'm trying to find things. Well, what I'd rather do is be a, one of the, the reasons space. I'm doing it is you think it's going to be a half hour, 45 minutes, but you never know, and you never know what comes up, etc. Exactly. So I'd rather have you wrap it up, boom, and then we plan enough time at the December meeting to. I, I would go for that as well. To, to wrap things up. How much time? Do we have available on December? Um, the only thing we have right now is on December 4th is the one we just continued from Whisper Way at 7.30. Okay. And how much time do you think we need on that? Not very much. This is you know what just happened. So. <laughs> <laughs> to, fill, to fill in the other side of your idea, though, if, if this session meets on the 27th after hopefully Conservation Commission closes, then we could possibly close this on the 27th and then possibly close or get very much of Whisper Way accomplished in December 4th. So that fills your one for one kind yeah. of. Um, I'm just afraid that we're not going to have. We're not going to have enough time. Yeah. I don't think, I, I don't I would think like we're going to have enough information I would like on Whisper Way. Yeah. suggest yeah. that we actually move the presentation from the 27th to the 4th and not even have a meeting on the 27th. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> so let me just let me just say though that we we kind of committed. I love the idea, by the way. Um, but we committed to marching through the master plan, and right. we do have an open space of time. I know everybody just the eye rolls just happen, but we do have um, time there to start walking through that a little bit more thoroughly. So why don't we look at let's plan a. Hour, a whisper away. On the fourth. On mm -hmm. the fourth, and then at at eight thirty till ten. Ten. Yeah. I mean, I I feel like we could wrap. This is done. Other than mm -hmm. you guys yes. deliberating. I mm -hmm. agree. I, I would just put those two things on there and then yep. done. Yep. So it let it take as long as it needs to take, right. and then we call it a night. Okay. So we have a motion to continue. I'll make that motion. Till December fourth at eight thirty p.m. Second. Discussion. Yeah. Does that also work for the applicant? Um, I think it can, uh, given uh, the issue on the twenty seventh. Um, I was hoping to get both done the same night, but we certainly appreciate your schedule and your, your timing. So we'll, we'll work with that December fourth. Okay. 
Along with Fran, the question that Fran is asking, <coughs> how does that work for the neighbors? <coughs> Thank God I'm getting shaking of the head. Okay. Okay, we have a, let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Thank you very much. All three yeah. ideas are great, and I can't yeah. So just to comment, zero, I'm, a, I'm okay with it. If we have additional agenda items for the 27th, I just Yeah, I'll No, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. I, yeah. So we can talk about the master plan yeah. for this stuff. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. While they're moving out, yeah. we'll do the NR plans. Can I just ask, though, if we're going to move forward with discussing the master plan and implementation plan? Can we have a better organized way of doing it than we started to do it? Because I just feel like that was kind of chaotic and we didn't really have a we didn't have goal a in mind. And so why don't we sit down and break it into sections? And but, but do you want to? It's not second. even so much that. It's like I feel like we read like the implementation item, but nobody really. Explain what I'm thinking. Like, we didn't really talk about what the item was and how it was implemented. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? There was yeah. no action to be taken. Right. right. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Is, is let's uh -huh. break it out into and what's a normal part of actions taken. Yeah. What? That's what I'm thinking. Is let's take the ones that are kind of normal process. Yeah. And let's break out the ones that need action items. Because some of them are just like your normal everyday, right. like as right. you're reviewing plans. So I'm not sure we need to have a labor discussion. Right. About That's what I'm things. thinking. Is let's go through and we'll work on that and identify okay. up front the so ones that need the discussion, like and then follow that with the normal ones. I have a suggestion too. Is maybe you know like you've had the the approach of all of us sort of captaining different. Uh, hearings. Yep. Maybe, maybe you know, throw out different sections. That's for, what Ken had done before. Right. Is that mostly. right? And so, and so that we're all a little bit responsible for organizing around sections and and leading the sections a little bit. Can do that. To John. I'll take all of the non-action Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mrs. Carr. <laughs> well, why don't we take an... Uh, okay. Why don't we do it this way? Because it's the next meeting, so you're not going to have time to necessarily yeah. do it. Let's take a first cut at what needs action and what's normal day to day. And then based on the action items, what needs to continue, we can then break those up. We can also give you up the next meeting, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If it needs. Yeah. yeah. And I will... Um, just back to solo for a second, work up uh, with the conditions. Okay. Oh, perfect. And, uh, and I believe Dave Marquinon is here for your a &R plans. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You have both? I have both, yep. Oh, wow. So here for uh, first one is uh, Stony Brook Road, lots of one and two. Uh, very simple. That's the one I'm sorry, up at Highland Park. Right? Highland Park, yes. Yeah. Okay. Highland Park 4, Sunny Brook Road. Uh, we have an existing lot 1, shaded in the green, lot 2 in the purple. Very simple. What we're doing is taking this little rectangle, 459 square feet, and moving it from 1 to 2. Frontage is not changing. Uh, area slightly. Zone block works. We're at 53,000, 48,000. Uh, reason why is that well as there had to be a why, right? Yeah, there had to, to be a why. Yeah. <coughs> Just one Discussion. question through the chair. Um, didn't you already do that for lot two, or at least lot two have some changes to it before? No, we've been in front of you folks on uh, 10, 11, and 12. Further on down. Yeah, further. and some 23s, those are all up in the kind of, uh, we did a modification. Uh, this side over here, we're talking tonight, uh, right here. Mm -hmm. We did one over here, and some over here on 23, but not on one or two. Further discussion? Okay. Okay. So, so one and someone want to make a motion? I'll, I'll motion to approve as. A second. Discussion? Just All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. It's so okay. We can do the signing. Are we supposed to vote on these? What is happening? Not required. <laughs> yeah, it's not required, but we have to vote on it. If we don't, then, then it's a, Okay, 148 Pond Street. 
Yep, uh, back in 2016, we were in front of you folks for a land court plan. Uh, this is the land court fossil here. The plan was a small little sliver here. This piece here, now known as post number 119. And this was the remainder. This property is just sold. The purpose of this plan is to take this 10,800 square feet, combine it with this one, just to make the lot a little bit bigger. That's the purpose of the plan. One less lot, sounds like a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, let's make it bigger. That lot's going from the property on? Pink to here. It's pink on its own. Yep, pink on its own. Well, it, it was. It was. Back in 16, it was this shape. Right. We're just taking a piece of yeah. ground. Okay. So we're not transferring from one to the other. Exactly. Yep. So can you just go chronologically what happened first in 2016 with, with land? 2016, it was all one lot. There was two. It was the, that in 2016, it was, uh, if you will, two lots, three lots. This little sliver. Right, right, right. We had utilities on the one lot. This piece went to here. We created a lot. It was more than 60,000 square feet. It took this shape. And then the Carlson Family Trust retained the rest of this. Today's purpose is to take this and just combine it with this particular lot. And that's to remain as a non billable lot uh, in, the, in the Carlson Family Trust. So it makes the unbuildable lot smaller. Yep. Um, but why not combine the whole thing? Because the family doesn't own the rest of it. But why are they giving up land that they also can't build on? I don't understand well, what, that part. What of they're it. trying to do is is create uh, a better shape on the lot. So now the if this new lot number nineteen would be here. Carlson Family Trust owns all of this as well. That's all. This just happened to fall on its own plan, on a land called plan. So we just carved out some lots on that back in sixty. Any other questions? Make a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Thank you. Approve the minutes from October 16th. Oh, I'll move the minutes. Second. 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 Um, a couple small changes. Just second it and then we can discuss, right? Yep. Second. Okay. With amendments? Yeah, go ahead and discuss. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's CS. Uh, Center School CS Reuse Committee by CSRAT. I lost two totally. Yeah. Okay, about can the we minutes? Add, about the minutes. Yeah. About the, um, we were talking about the Center, Center School okay. Reuse Committee. It's CSRAT for the uh, initials. Okay. Okay, where is that? It's deep into the minutes, yeah. Oh, it's That's where the H is. Okay. You want CS rat? CS rat. CS rat. Okay. I was trying Any to Any other changes? <laughs> <laughs> so can we get a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carried. Okay, can I just, uh, maybe before, because I got lost, but I don't really know where you were in the talk. Okay, who moved and seconded? I moved. Okay. I Okay. So that was your only change, the abbreviation. Yeah. So why don't we, we're at 10 o'clock, or at 11 o'clock clock time. Uh, make a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Thank you, and it might be slippery out there, so be oh, careful. Yeah, be careful. Oh, 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 y